Ezekiel 6, Judgment on Idolatrous Israel The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward the mountains of Israel and prophesy against them and say, You mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God to the mountains and the hills, to the ravines and the valleys. Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword upon you, and I will destroy your high places. Your altars shall become desolate, and your incense altars shall be broken. And I will cast down your slain before your idols, and I will lay the dead bodies of the people of Israel before their idols, and I will scatter your bones round about your altars. Wherever you dwell, your cities shall be waste, and your high places ruined, so that your altars will be waste and ruined, your idols broken and destroyed, your incense altars cut down, and your works wiped out, and the slain shall fall in the midst of you, and you shall know that I am the God. Yet I will leave some of you alive. When you have among the nations some who escape the sword, and when you are scattered through the countries, then those of you who escape will remember me among the nations where they are carried captive. When I have broken their wanton heart, which has departed from me, and blinded their eyes, which turn wantonly after their idols, and they will be loathsome in their own sight of the evils which they have committed for all their abominations. And they shall know that I am the Lord. I have not said in vain that I would do this evil to them. Thus says the Lord God, clap your hands and stamp your foot and say, Alas, because of all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they shall fall by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. He that is far off shall die of pestilence, and he that is near shall fall by the sword, and he that is left and is preserved shall die of famine. Thus I will spend my fury upon them, and you shall know that I am the Lord, when their slain lie among their idols, round about their altars, upon every high hill, on all the mountain tops, under every green tree, and under every leafy oak, wherever they offered pleasing odor to all their idols. And I will stretch out my hand against them, and make the land desolate and waste throughout all their habitations, from the wilderness to Ribla, then they will know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel 7 Impending Disaster The word of the Lord came to me, And you, O son of man, thus says the Lord God to the land of Israel, An end, the end has come upon the four corners of the land. Now the end is upon you, and I will let loose my anger upon you and will judge you according to your ways, and I will punish you for all your abominations. And my eye will not spare you, nor will I have pity, but I will punish you for your ways, while your abominations are in your midst. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, disaster after disaster, behold it comes, an end has come, the end has come, it has awakened against you. Behold, it comes. Your doom has come to you, O inhabitant of the land, and the time has come. The day is near, a day of tumult, and not of joyful shouting upon the mountains. Now I will soon pour out my wrath upon you, and spend my anger against you, and judge you according to your ways and I will punish you for all your abominations. And my eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. I will punish you according to your ways, 
while your abominations are in your midst, then you will know that I am the Lord who smite. Behold the day, behold it comes, your doom has come, injustice has blossomed, pride has budded, violence has grown up into a rod of wickedness, none of them shall remain, nor their abundance, nor their wealth, neither shall there be preeminence among them. The time has come, the day draws near, let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all their multitude. For the seller shall not return to what he has sold while they live, for wrath is upon all their multitude, it shall not turn back, and because of his iniquity, none can maintain his life. They have blown the trumpet and made all ready, but none goes to battle, for my wrath is upon all their multitude. The sword is without pestilence, and famine are within. He that is in the field dies by the sword, and him that is in the city famine, and pestilence devour. And if any survivors escape, they will be on the mountains, like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning, every one over his iniquity. All hands are feeble, and all knees weak as water. They grid themselves with slack cloth, and horror covers them. Shame is upon all faces, and baldness on all their heads. They cast their silver into the streets, and their gold is like an unclean thing. Their silver and gold are not able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They cannot satisfy their hunger or fill their stomachs with it, for it was the stumbling block of their iniquity. Their beautiful ornament they used for vain glory, and they made their abominable images and their detestable things of it. Therefore, I will make it an unclean thing to them, and I will give it into the hands of foreigners for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall profane it. I will turn my face from them, that they may profane my precious place. Robbers shall enter and profane it, and make a dissolution. Because the land is full of bloody crimes and the city is full of violence, I will bring the worst of the nations to take possession of their houses. I will put an end to their proud might, and their holy places shall be profaned. When anguish comes, they will seek peace, but there shall be none. Disaster comes upon disaster, rumor follows rumor. They seek a vision from the prophet, but the law perishes from the priest and counsel from the elders. The king moans, the prince is wrapped in despair, and the hands of the people of the land are palsied by terror. According to their way I will do to them, and according to their own judgments I will judge them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel 8 Abominations in the Temple In the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house with the elders of Judah sitting before me, the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I beheld, and lo, a form that had the appearance of a man, below what appeared to be his lions to, was fire, and above his lions it was like the appearance of brightness, like gleaming bronze. He put forth the form of a hand, and took me by a lock of my head, and the Spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven, and brought me in visions of God to Jerusalem, to the entrance of the gateway of the inner court that faces north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provokes to jealousy, and behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, like the vision that I saw in the plain. Then he said to me, Son of man, lift up your eyes, now in the direction of the north. So I lifted up my eyes toward the north, and behold, north of the altar gate, in the entrance, 
was this image of jealousy. And he said to me, son of man, do you see what they are doing? The great abominations that the house of Israel are committing here to drive me far from my sanctuary. But you will see still greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, there was a hole in the wall. Then said he to me, son of man, dig in the wall. And when I dug in the wall, lo, there was a door. And he said to me, go in and see the wild abominations that they are committing here. So I went in and saw, and there, portrayed upon the wall round about, were all kinds of creeping things, and loads of beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel. And before them stood seventy men of the leaders of the house of Israel, with Janaz, Naya, and the son of Safan, standing among them. Eat had his censer in his hand, and the smoke of the cloud of incense went up. Then he said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the dark, every man in his room of pictures? For they say, The Lord does not see us, the Lord has forsaken the land. He said also to me, you will see still greater abominations which they commit. Then he brought me to the entrance of the north gate of the house of the Lord, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Then he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? You will see still greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the house of the Lord, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were not twenty-five men, but their backs to the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, worshipping the sun toward the east. Then he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Is it too slight a thing for the house of Judah to commit the abominations which they commit here, that they should fill the land with violence? and provoked me further to anger. Lo, they put the branch to their nose, therefore I will deal in wrath. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity, and though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, I will not hear them. Ezekiel 9 The Slaughter of the Idolaters Then he cried in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Draw near! You executioners of the city, each with his destroying weapon in his hand, and lo, six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, every man with his weapon for slaughter in his hand, and with them was a man clothed in linen, with a writing case at his side. And they went in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of God of Israel had gone up from the cherubim on which it rested to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed in linen, who had the writing case at his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the city, through Jerusalem, and put a mark upon the foreheads of the men who sigh and groan over all the abominations that are committed in it. And to the others he said in my hearing, Pass through the city after him, and smite. Your eyes shall not spare, and you shall show no pretty. Slay old men outright, young men and maidens, little children and women, but touch no one upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were before the house. Then he said to them, Defile the house, and fill the courts with the slain. Go forth. So they went forth and smote in the city. And while they were smitting and was left alone, I fell upon my face and cried, Ha, ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all that remains of Israel in the outpouring of thy wrath upon Jerusalem? Then he said to me, 
the guilt of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. The land is full of blood and the city full of injustice. For they say, the Lord has forsaken the land and the Lord does not see. As for me, my eye will not spare, nor will I pity, but I will requite their deeds upon their heads. And lo, the man clothed in linen with the writing case at his side brought back word, saying, I have done as thou didst command me. Ezekiel 10 God's glory leaves Jerusalem. Then I look and behold on the firmament that was over the heads of the cherubim. They appeared about them something like a sapphire in form resembling a throne. And he said to the man clothed in linen, Go in among the whirling wheels underneath the cherubim. Fill your hands with burning coals from between the cherubim and scatter them over the city. And he went in before my eyes. Now the cherubim were standing on the south side of the house. When the man went in, and a cloud filled the inner court, and the glory of the Lord went up from the cherubim to the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the glory of the God. And the sound of the wings of the cherubim was heard as far as the outer court, like the voice of God Almighty when he speaks. And when he commanded the man clothed in linen, take fire from between the whirling wheels, from between the cherubim, he went in and stood beside a wheel, and a cherub stretched forth his hand from between the cherubim to the fire that was between the cherubim, and took some of it, and put it in to the hands of the man clothed in linen, who took it and went out. The cherubim appeared to have the form of a human hand under their wings. And I looked, and behold, there were four wheels beside the cherubim, one beside each cherub, and the appearance of the wheels was like sparkling chrysolite. And as for their appearance, the four had the same likeness, and if a wheel were within a wheel, when they went, they went in any of their four directions without turning as they went. But in whatever direction the front wheel faced the others, followed without turning as they went. And their rims and their spokes and the wheels were full of eyes round about. The wheels that the four of them had, as for the wheels, they were called in my hearing, the whirling wheels, and everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of the cherub, and the second face was the face of a man, and the third face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. And the cherubim mounted up. There were the living creatures that I saw by the river Shebar. And when the cherubim went, the wheels went beside them. And when the cherubim lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, the wheels did not turn from beside them. When they stood still, they stood still. And when they mounted up, they mounted up with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in them. Then the glory of the Lord went forth from the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubim. And the cherubim lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight as they went forth with the wheels beside them. And they stood at the door of the east gate of the house of the Lord, and the glory of the God of Israel was over them. These were the living creatures that I saw underneath the God of Israel by the river Kibar, and I knew that they were cherubim. Each had four faces and each four wings, and underneath their wings the semblance of human hands. And as for the likeness of their faces, they were the very faces whose appearance I had seen by the river Kibar. They went every one straight forward.